Nicholas Heitner is here. He has just completed the film version of The Madness of King George. It will be released in New York and Los Angeles on December 28th. He originally directed the play last year to rave reviews and seems to be getting the same kind of reaction for the film. He has directed other plays here, and it's a pleasure to have him back at this table. Welcome. Good Thank to you. have you back. Um, have you seen Robert Altman's film? No, I haven't yet. I haven't. No, I am, but I'm enormously flattered to be on the same program oh, as him. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I, he's a he's a, um, he's he's approaching legendary status. Oh, he? he's great. A great movie yeah. maker. Nashville, one of the greatest movies of all time. The player was quite wonderful, and yeah. I'm dying to see Predator yeah. Porter. Let's talk about the Madness of King George. Last time you were here, you said you know you you you've done the play, and you were a little bit anxious about directing it as a film. Uh, how do you feel now? I had the most wonderful time. I do, one, of the th one of the things I hadn't quite appreciated was how much control you get as a movie director. <laughs> I mean, all those fantasies which I've never been quite able yeah. to fulfill as a stage director, suddenly they were there for yeah. the taking. Yeah. Some people have said that a lot of stage directors actually become directors because of their interest in film, and they just go into stage because it's a place they can go. I think I was, I think I was seized by the theater bug first, first but yeah. I've, uh, I've always been a great moviegoer. I've been wanting to make a movie for a long time. This is the first time I ever felt I had a right to. Uh, in that I was uh, involved with this material since before it was a play, really. So yeah. it's, um, Some people must tell you, I mean, did, did you have, did you, did you have to fight for the actors? I mean, Nigel Hawthorne doesn't have the bankability in America that somebody else might have, and frequently coming out of a play, they'll, they'll force directors to choose someone who's a movie star. I would have had to fight had we gone with anybody else in the Samuel Goldwyn company. Yeah. Sam Goldwyn uh, was always clear that he was he he wanted to make this movie with Nigel in the central role. I mean, Nigel has lost out before, yeah. but uh, uh, Sam Goldwyn is 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 yeah. a man of great taste and integrity, and there were other offers. Uh, from other studios to, to make the picture, but we obviously went with the one where we could make it the way we wanted to. Yeah. They say this may be an Oscar performance by him. I hope it is. Uh, I think it's a fantastic performance for the I would, but it's, uh, he's a great actor, a great actor who, age 65, uh, is, I think, on the brink of being discovered worldwide. Helen Mirren, who was here talking about this, why her? She's she's about the best actress we have of uh, of that generation she has an extraordinary spontaneity she was able to bring something uh, that hadn't really been brought before to to the relationship between the king and the queen she's completely uninhibited about um, about virtues which are unfashionable really as, as far as movies are concerned uh, in middle aged marriages yeah. uh, the, the, gr the great thing she provided was a sense that uh, these two middle aged folk who had 15 children behind them, 27 years marriage uh, were still having a great time with each other, a totally fulfilled emotional and sexual relationship and you don't see many of those yeah. on stage or screen Tell me about the story, even though we talked about it when it was on stage when you were here before because of Carousel. Tell me about the story and what makes it interesting as a story. The story, very simply, is, is about uh, a period in the life of King George III of England, a, a, good, um, a good 15 years after, yeah. 10, 15 years after he lost the colonies. Uh, which um, colonies? You can tell, you can yeah, tell what know, nationality I am. Yeah, I know. I, I heard, yeah. uh, but uh, d uh, when he appeared after to go... After we won the war. Yeah, after you won the war, <laughs> he appeared to go stark raving mad. The two were often linked. In, in, in legend, uh, the, lo the loss of America and the king's insanity have been, have been linked regularly. Yeah. Uh, it's now thought that actually he was suffering from a, a physical disease. But the, the movie is as which much... Was? A, which was called Porphyria, right. which has the symptoms of madness. Right. Uh, and is hereditary, and is still in the royal family. But it it it's, um, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't necessarily emerge in every generation. And if, it's, if it's in the royal family, what's the best evidence of it? Uh, appearance of insanity. <laughs> so go figure. Okay. Um, but uh, the movie is. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna let you back. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is the movie isn't so much about about the illness as, as about the consequences of the illness, but the, both uh, for the king and for those surrounding him. And it's uh, it's actually very pertinent. It's about, it's about what happens when um, when the, the the power figure, the figure of power, the, the man or woman who is in the position of authority suddenly loses it. What happens to, uh, to that person and what happens to those around him? No, but why is that relevant to now? Well, perhaps the, the key line 
in, in the film is when one of the doctors who's treating the king says, who is to say what is normal in a king, deferred to, agreed with, acquiesced in, who could flourish on such a daily diet of compliance? Yes. Now, <laughs> you see, wherever you move in the world, whether, yeah. you, whether, you, whether you move on a film set, yeah. in, in, in the theatre world, in business, in politics, yeah. uh, uh, the, guys who, who, the guys whose diet, the, whose daily diet is, is compliance. compliance. Yeah. Somebody saying yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. How do, you, how do they know whether they're crazy or not? This is, how, how, does, how does anybody who is in any position of authority ever know that they are crazy? And do we not all know, those of us who've had to deal with superiors, and, and, who, who, those of us who've had to report to a boss in some sphere or yeah. other, um, that, that we, we're never quite prepared to tell them that they're barking mad <laughs> when they are. They, they therefore generally oh, stop go it. barking mad, you know? <laughs> yes. All right. Let me just take a look at that. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, and, and, and I mean, it used to be that when they would talk about being president, mm -hmm. people would say, well, only very strange people become president. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would talk about men of different kinds of gifts, and they would say, I mean, Lyndon Johnson, mm -hmm. you know, Richard Nixon, mm -hmm. you know, who, who may have been great in terms of what they had done. Johnson was a fabulous legislative strategist yeah. and, and a, and a powerful man. Richard Nixon clearly had political talent. I mean, you couldn't yeah. go through what he did and come back and then remain on the scene if you yeah. didn't have some political ta talent. But people would look and say, you know, you got to be crazy to go through what they but who go in the, through. But who in their court who in their court had the balls to tell them, you are crazy? Yeah. I mean, on the occasions when I've stood... Well, less so Johnson than Nixon, perhaps, yeah. but not. But I mean, on the occasions I've stood in a line yeah. and, and, had to, and had to be yeah. presented to some, some member of the royal right. family or other, to yeah. the royal premiers right. ones having to turn up to all the time, uh, they, they move through life buoyed up by waves of sycophantic laughter. Right. They presumably think, the Queen of England presumably thinks that her entire populace is constantly Adoring. in a state of forced <laughs> merriment. That's all they ever do, laugh, yeah. laugh. That's right. That's right. How, does, how does she know what real life is, yeah. poor thing? Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, but I think to a different degree, to a different yeah. degree, that problem is everywhere. Yeah, but I don't necessarily think those people want obesience. That's mm -hmm. not what they really want necessarily. It is just the people around them, you know, say, think that's what they, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I, I think most people, it, it's a little bit like when you move around, if you're a celebrity, I mean, mm -hmm. I can imagine what it's like to be you or these people, and, you know, there is this sense that that you want certain kind of sycophantic behavior. I don't mm -hmm. suspect that a lot of people don't want that. Yeah. You know, but in, with certain kinds of things, it goes with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure I you buy into this. No, I. Uh, well, talking as a talking as a theatre director, a movie director, intermittently in a position of authority and influence. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, for the three or four weeks after my show or my movie opens, I want people to tell me it's good. There, I, there, there, I want it. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it, it, it's yeah. you know. You know when you want to tonight. really tell you it's not good is when you're making it, so yeah, that you have sure. some guidance as to what sure. you're going to end up with. Yeah, six weeks after it's opened, I think it's no good anyway. No, so me too. <laughs> I mean, after that, you just yeah. moving on. When you watch it. Do you see it differently every time? Now, when I watch it, I think I should, you should have. I, think I, should, I should have, have I should shot have. it this way, not that way. It's a, the, one of the one of the most depressing differences between directing a film and directing yeah. a play is that at the end of every day, uh, uh, you know what you did wrong. Right. The great thing about rehearsing a play is that you then go in the next day and do it right. Right, you can change and change and change. Dire when, once you've shot, once yeah. you've shot a scene in a movie and you realize you should have shot, shot it some different way, or you yeah. missed a shot, uh, that's it. You can't go back and reshoot. Yeah. Although some people will go back and sh reshoot if they feel like they sort of missed something. Yeah, I think I but, think but it can um, be costly. I guess I, it can be costly, and I think th those people have acquired a certain clout. <laughs> yes, yeah, clout. Is, is there a new wave of young British directors and people like? You and Mendez, is it Mendez mm -hmm. and Daldry and people like that? Mm -hmm. do, what do you represent, you think, other than just three contemporary young Brits? And there are others. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Kenneth Branagh, for example. And right. Declan Donnellan, who, had, right, uh, who right. had As You Like It at BAM recently, right. which was fabulous. I, I don't know. We, we, we um, hang out with each other quite a lot, and we talk quite oh, a lot. Oh, it's a brat pack. Yeah, no. I, I guess a brat pack, yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's possible to be a British no, brat. But you do hang but, out and share in some sense. Yeah. You share criticism with each other and, and appraisal. And, and I think mostly we gossip. <laughs> um, uh, but it's uh, I don't know I think I think the the, 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 the British stage there is a there is a, a certain tradition into which one can fit and learn I think we've I think we've broken out more we've we've um, yeah. we've been exploring you can learn more by by experimentation on the British stage that in, in, in terms of things you can even apply to film D yeah I think I think working on the stage isn't about 
I don't think okay, about but training why, for film. I don't, I've only got less than 30 seconds, but why? Essentially what one's talking about is acting and story, character and story, working with actors, working with writers, telling a story. The, the, the theatre's a very good training for, for, for that. In, in the end, to me, a good movie is, is a good story well acted. Yeah. Um, that which I didn't know about, uh, which, which I was terribly excited to learn about, the camera, the, yeah. the, uh, is something which I think I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm yeah. still but in But Helen Mirren said, I, I'm out of time, but Helen Mirren said you had a great sense of the visual. Of the uh, great visual sense, I guess you said. I d if I did, it was instinctual, and I was helped <laughs> yeah. a lot. All right. It's great to see you, Nick. It's good to see you. Uh, you're going to spend your first Christmas in New York City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Merry, I'm looking forward to it. Merry Christmas. And to you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the movie The Madness of King George has gotten really very good reviews. Nigel Hawthorne, uh, especially for his performance, also Helen Mirren and others, directed by Nick Heitner.